with this video, the top 10 facts about Mexico, right here on Most Amazing Top 10. Now, Mexico is a land of rich history, famous food, and one of only two countries in the world with the letter X in its name. See, we're only in the intro, and we've already got bonus facts like that popping up. I'll let you guys try and figure out the other country that has the letter X in its name as we jump right into our number 10. Now, some people claim that Mexico is home to the smallest volcano in the world. In Pueblo City lies Cuexamote, a tiny geyser that is just 43 feet tall and 75 feet across. It was created during a volcanic eruption almost 1,000 years ago, but is now considered inactive. This is actually good for tourism though, because it means that you can now climb down into this pint-sized volcano on a spiral metal staircase. It's so small, in fact, that it sits neatly in a suburban neighborhood in Pueblo, right in the middle of the houses and roads. Now, scientists think that it's harmless these days, it's not going to blow at all, but the big volcano that created it is starting to become a bit more active in recent years, and some say that if that one erupts, then the smallest volcano in the world might not be so small anymore. Moving on now to our number nine, and it wouldn't be a video about Mexico if we didn't mention its food. Yes, the country is a rich blend of all kinds of different cultures, new and old, that have merged over the years to create some of the most popular dishes in the world. I'm sure you guys will have heard of some of these. We've got salsa, there's tacos, there's enchiladas, and there's guacamole, and they've all been exported to homes and restaurants in every country on the planet, with people just falling in love with the authentic Mexican cuisine. But it's not just modern meals that the world has to thank Mexico for. The Aztecs of Mexico are credited with the creation of corn on the cob, and they were the first ones to really properly grow maize, and the use of chilies in meals. But perhaps what they're most famous for is the invention of chocolate. Yes, that's right. 3,100 years ago, the Aztecs were trying to make beer, but they ended up making chocolate by accident. That sounds like a win-win situation to me. If they failed at making beer, they would make chocolate. Well, they definitely won, because that's possibly the best mistake in history. Who's with me? All right, moving on to number eight now. You might be wondering, what's the deal with the Mexican flag? What is that little thing in the middle? What's the meaning of it? Well, firstly, let's talk about the colors, because even the colors have similar Symbolism. The green on the flag represents Mexico's independence from Spain. The white is a reference to the country's Catholic faith, and the red represents the blood of the national heroes who died for Mexico, especially in its fight for independence. Now, the figure in the middle comes from the Aztecs. The legends say that when the Aztecs were looking for a place to build their great new city, the gods had told them to build where they saw an eagle on a pear tree eating a snake. They saw exactly this, apparently, on a marshy lake, and established what we know today as Mexico City. Cool flag, you gotta love a cool flag. Well, you might not love a cool flag, but I do. And speaking of Mexico City, it's a very unique place that holds quite a few records, so let's talk about it. Why not? Firstly, it's huge. Mexico City is the largest metropolitan area in North America, and the sixth largest in the world. It also has the most taxi cabs in the world. 100,000 of them fill the streets there. This also helps it to be the most congested city in the world when it comes to traffic. Its congestion level is at 50 59%, which means it takes drivers 59% longer to get anywhere compared to a non congested place. Basically, if you're stuck in traffic, you're not going anywhere. Mexico City is also slowly sinking into the ground at a rate of 10 centimeters a year. Why? Because it's actually built on a lake. Yes, large parts of the city were constructed on the dried out bed of a big lake, which isn't the best foundation for a city. I'm not an architect, and even I know that. It was built on the ruins of the Aztec city Tenochtitlan which was destroyed by the Spanish in 1521. They renamed it Mexico City, and eventually the whole country was named after this city. I could go on all day about this place, but I won't. Maybe I should do a video about Mexico City. Have any of you guys been there? What do you think of it? If you have been there, I'm jealous. Let's move on. Moving on to number six. Mexico holds the record for having the shortest presidency of all time. On February 19th, 1913, there was a military revolt against the government that overthrew President Francisco Madero. According to the Mexican constitution, the presidency had to pass to the next in line, which was the foreign minister, Pedro Lascuren. He then spent the next hour signing papers to make the leader of the military the president, but during that time, he was officially the 34th president of Mexico for one 
hour as he was signing those papers. That's the shortest presidency of any country ever. He woke up, went to work, became president, resigned that day and then came home. What a day. Alright guys, you can see there are many great things to say about Mexico, but at number 5, it's quite difficult to talk about Mexico without talking about the country's struggle with corruption and crime. The Mexican drug cartels are world famous for their brutality with each other and with the police that they fight against. There has been an ongoing war there for over a decade as the cartels fight to control the trade of drugs in the country and the transportation of it to the rest of the world. The sad thing is, many civilians have been caught in the crossfire along the way. The government revealed that in the first 9 months of 2011, 12,903 people were killed in drug related violence. This doesn't even take into account the thousands of people that go missing every single year. It's an inescapable but ugly truth that the drug cartels are a daily reality for many Mexicans. In 2012, it was estimated that 450,000 Mexicans work for a drug cartel in some way. And that a further 3.2 million people's livelihoods depended on it. Young people turn to them often as the best source of income in a country that has been really struggling economically in recent times and many people are saying that the government's approach to the whole situation just isn't working anymore. Something has to change. Coming in at number 4, the official language of Mexico as you guys probably know is Spanish, but that's not the only one, there are many many others. Estimates put Mexico at 6th place in the world for unique languages with 297 individual languages being spoken. The main immigrant language there is English and the main foreign languages include the likes of German and Greek, Italian and Arabic, but the biggest bulk is the number of indigenous languages. These are the tongues that were spoken by people people long before the Spanish arrived in Mexico. There are an estimated 68 different indigenous languages. These range from the most spoken ones such as the Nahuatl language with over 1.3 million speakers to the Aguacate language that apparently has just 27 speakers in Mexico. I wasn't even aware that there were so many languages in Mexico, I'm probably learning more than you guys from this video to be honest. Alright moving on, if I asked you guys to picture the pyramids, you would probably think of these ones, the ones in Egypt. But at number Number 3, the biggest pyramid is actually said to be in Mexico. The pyramid of Cholula has a base that spans 450 meters. That's almost twice the length of the Great Pyramid of Khufu in Egypt. Now, if you look at pictures of it, you might struggle to even see this giant pyramid. That's because most of the complex is now actually under a hill, with only a small church that's visible on top. Below, though, there are layers of a pyramid complex, the earliest of which are said to be over 2,000 years old and were built as a temple to an Aztec god. New layers were then built over the next 600 years. When taking all of these different parts, into account, the Guinness Book of Records named it as not just the largest pyramid ever built, but also the largest monument ever built in the world. Some people argue that it doesn't really count as the biggest because it's made up of different parts, but I've never personally picked a fight with the Guinness Book of World Records and I'm not going to start today. That pyramid wins in my books. Moving on to number 2, did you know that Mexico used to own large parts of the United States? Mexico has experienced great shifts in its borders over the years. A at one point, the first empire of Mexico used to control about 5 million square kilometers of land, ranging from Costa Rica in the south right up to California in the north. After Mexico lost the Mexico-American War with the US in 1848, it had to hand over many of its former territories including California, Nevada, Utah, most of Arizona, about a quarter of Colorado and a small section of Wyoming. Do any of you guys live in the areas that I just mentioned? If you do, you can say to anyone that where you live used to be part of the first Mexican empire and not everyone can say that, I certainly can't. And finally, we've reached number 1. Now this is a bit of a random one, but I thought it was a really cool fact and we just, well, you know, we don't mind being random here and most amazing top 10. So in Mexico, it is legal for some people to actually pay their taxes 
through artwork that they make. Yes, the government set up a program called Payment in Kind, the only one of its kind in the world, and this allows artists to pay their federal income taxes with original pieces of art that they create. The program was launched in 1957 when famous Mexican artist David Sequeiros asked the government to allow him and his friend to pay their tax debt in art to avoid going to jail for tax evasion. Amazingly, you might think they agreed and set up this program. Almost 60 years on, the public collection has nearly 7,000 paintings, sculptures and graphics from some of the country's most well-known artists. A committee then decides if the work is fit and if they like it, they send it out to fill up museums all over Mexico or they might even loan it out to museums in other countries. It sounds crazy, but it's true. I think it's really